In what I can only imagine is step one, the police have raided the home of the McCloskeys. These are the people who were defending their home in St. Louis when a bunch of Black Lives Matter protesters entered a private community seeking to protest the mayor. The McCloskeys said that they were threatened. I believe them. They said that they were told they were going to you know, shoot them, kill them, burn their house down, burn their dog. And the property the McCloskeys live on is like an old, renovated, gilded age mansion or something. So when the protesters showed up and entered the property through a gate, which had a big old sign saying, you know, private property, no trespassing, they brandished their weapons. Now, some people have argued, you know, the left obviously is saying, oh, no, they're attacking peaceful protesters. It's a crime. They're going to be arrested. Well, I believe they will likely face some kind of criminal prosecution. The last story we heard, I believe, is that the the prosecutors are looking at some kind of like fourth degree assault charge, and they're trying to, they're exploring whether or not to actually charge this couple. Amid this uh, this search warrant, the police seized the AR-15 owned by Mark McCloskey, the man he's holding the rifle. Now, I think it's fair to say they were holding their weapons wrong, and there's some criticism to go around. The, the woman, I believe her name is Patricia, was actually pointing the gun at people. But there's another side of this. You see, there have been ongoing riots for the past month plus. I think we're now on like week seven of the Portland riots. There have been ongoing occupational protests from D.C. to New York, Seattle, Portland. Obviously, Seattle and Portland kind of fizzled out. We all know about the Chaz. But there has been a lot of death. Okay, A lot of people have died, have lost their lives. So for me personally, while I think you can criticize the McCloskeys, I think we are going to see more action taken against them. And listen, what have we seen? You dance on a federal highway in Seattle, no charges. Then when some guy makes some what appears to be a stupid mistake, drives his vehicle down the highway and hits one of these people, he goes to prison. Well, this, this story in Seattle, which I'm sure most of you are aware of, the guy's being held, the, the driver, his name is uh, uh, DeWitt Kalete. He's being held on $1.2 million bond for what appears to be an accident. And, he, and, and, he, and he's received vehicular homicide charges. That's what he's being charged with. It's a manslaughter charge. Clearly, it wasn't intentional. Where is the where, where is when are the, the police, the law enforcement, the authorities going to start arresting these people? So let me tell you, after they, you know, they brandished their weapon, I predicted a couple of things. First of all, the protesters would come back and they did. And this time, when they did come back, the McCloskeys had private security. Well, there you go. And their windows were boarded up. Now it's gone one step further. They no longer have their weapons. So now the police, the press, and to an extent me, I guess you can criticize me, have broadcasted now to the world. And the McCloskeys are unarmed, though they will still probably have private security. I wouldn't be surprised if more of these far leftists try to take advantage of this and then head to their house. There's more here, though. You see, I live in the South. Uh, I live in I live in the Philadelphia area, and when it comes to these these ongoing riots, which have not stopped, one thing the media loves to do is claim that Antifa does not exist. It's not a real thing. And I thought to explain the to, to break down why this family probably thinks they needed weapons and came out with them. I want to show you a couple stories. The same newspaper, the Philadelphia Inquirer claims that, you know, it's all misunderstood and we'll get a comment from Antifa to really explain it. And, you know, all of these groups are hearing this noise. It's a boogeyman. Antifa's not a thing. And then they literally have someone claiming to be an Antifa leader. And I can pull up an article where they literally wrote about Antifa threatening to burn down a theater for hosting an event with what, what, what Antifa describes as controversial speakers. Of course, Antifa is lying. These are just authoritarian wing nuts who are violent. But it's funny to me because we can have this story about the McCloskeys. We can have all the stories of death over the past month. We now have another story posted by Andy No of some far leftist Antifa guy trying to breach a federal courthouse. And when the federal officer, a, uh, agents or whatever, stop him, he bashes the fed, the fed in the head and gets arrested. This hasn't stopped. It's ongoing. Yet you have all of these media outlets refusing to do any research to understand why it is a family may want to have a weapon on them or may go onto their lawn when hundreds of people come on their property. Let's read the story from the Daily Mail, and then I'll show you the rest. Police raid house of gun-toting St. Louis lawyer and confiscate the AR-15 brandished during a confrontation with Black Lives Matter protesters. 
Police executed a search warrant and seized the rifle. On Friday, authorities searched the home of lawyers Mark and Patricia McCloskey, who made headlines on June 28th when a video went viral showing them waving firearms at protesters who had masked outside their home. The search turned up the AR-15 that had been held by Mark McCloskey, while a handgun brandished by Patricia McCloskey was already in possession of her attorney. You can see they have the photos here. We complied with the search warrant. They took my AR, Mark McCloskey confirmed, to the Todd Starnes radio show. I'm absolutely surprised by this. No charges have been filed against the couple. The pair's attorney, Joel Joel Schwartz, intends to meet with St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kimberly Gardner's office next week, the Washington, Washington Examiner reports. The McCloskeys have said that they were in fear of the protesters and were protecting their home when they were seen pointing firearms at the crowd. I believe it was only uh, the woman. The man was holding a rifle rather improperly, though. It was shocking. The gate came in. Seemingly everybody in the world came forward. I think the estimate is 300 to 500 people, Mark McCloskey told Fox News on Tuesday. They came right toward us. We were preparing to have dinner on the porch, and we were literally 70 feet from the gate. By the time we got our guns, by the time I got my gun, the crowd was probably 30 or 40 feet from us. We thought it was the end. People were screaming everything. Asked what the protesters were shouting at them, Patricia McCloskey added that they were going to kill us, they were going to come in there, that they were going to burn the house down, that they were going to be living in our house after I was dead, she said. Listen, I believe it. I have heard some of the most insane and vile things. This is mob mentality. When they're in a crowd, they don't think they they can be held accountable. So they just start screaming. And I've heard them yell similar things to this. I mean, on their own, they yell things like this at me. There's there's if if I go to one of these protests, you'll hear them start yelling and they and they escalate. The more people yell, the crazier things get. Considering everything we've seen from the far left, I believe it. She said they pointed to different rooms in the house and said, that's going to be my bedroom before threatening to kill their dog when it barked. Mark McCloskey said he started trying to arrange private security for the house when the couple received a tip saying the protesters were planning to come back to get us and burn the house. We had been told that the city police had been ordered to stand down. We had been told there was going to be no official help. Our neighborhood association put put out a flyer saying if people broke in, they were just going to let them. So we started trying to hire private security. And uh, and entity after entity said they did not want to get involved. Ooh, isn't that getting spicy? Here you go. Not only will you have no police, they will take your guns away from you when you defend yourself. And the private security will say, we do not want to be involved in this kind of controversy. And there you go. What will you be left with? A mob marching around, destroying property, threatening you, And the only thing you can do is get on your knees and beg, beg them. You can't defend yourself. You'll be arrested. They'll take your guns away. And the private security can't help you. Welcome to uh, uh, 2020. I can only imagine that things will get worse as the violence escalates. And it is in many parts of the country. Now, listen, there it comes and goes in waves. It's very likely that these big waves are from from June are starting to die down. And they are. But the next time they spark up, People are already they're going to be they're going to be demanding that escalation. And I think we're going to start to see some pretty crazy stuff on Election Day. I tell you what, man, I don't know. Election Day is probably the wrong way to put it. It's probably election month and we will see what happens. But look, Roger uh, Roger Stone got got his sentence commuted. Trump, I think, waited to wait until the 11th hour and he made his move. But I think it's possible we could see some some DOJ moves against some political factions on the left before Election Day. It's hard to know for sure exactly what will happen. But I will I do believe that this level of violence will continue to escalate because, well, it is. They said that the situation became so bad, the couple started hiding their valuables and were told by one security firm of former special forces members to walk away and abandon the house. Instead, the couple stayed put and said the second protest was loud but not violent. And what happens if at three in the morning someone shows up? One person, that's all it takes. Unfortunately, I would say that security firm is correct. In terms of safety, if you came to me and said, based on my experience, what would be the best thing to do in terms of safety? I would say, leave now. In terms of principle and standing up for yourself and defending what's yours, that I can understand why you would stay and take the risk. But if we were purely operating on a how can we remain safe, those people, the McCloskey's, should have left a long time ago. That, that night after the protest, they should have packed up and gotten out of there. They can hire private security who can occupy the house. 
But on principle, I understand why they would stay because I got to admit, I wouldn't leave either. What I'm saying is the security firm is 100% correct. But let's move on from here. So I want to point out, I have made these predictions. The first thing I said was that I believe they're going to be arrested. Well, actually, the first thing I said was, you know, that they're going to, well, no, yeah, yeah, they're going to be arrested. The protesters were going to come back and they likely will be charged or arrested for some reason. When they came out and claimed they supported Black Lives Matter, a lot of people got, well, a lot of people were upset that they would bend the knee in this way. Well, they're doing everything in their power to try and survive. I guess since then they've come out and been more critical. But I tweeted the goal of these two people was to make sure they had absolutely no friends when the state brings criminal charges against them. What I mean by that, as you can see from the Daily Wire, couple who pulled guns on protesters support Black Lives Matter, lawyer says. It seemed like they were trying to pander to the crowd in hopes they would go away, like that would work. And so now they've soured, at least to many conservatives and, you know, people who have normally supported them, they've soured that relationship. I think for the most part, you're still going to find a lot of people supporting them, especially because they've kind of walked away from those statements, though they still kind of maintain that. Do you want to have like, do you want anyone to support you? They'll, the Black Lives Matter movement will never support you. They don't care about you. You're rich people in a big fancy mansion and you have guns and you're waving them around. They're going to use you as a symbol to make themselves look like the victim so they can gain more power. Coming out and supporting them just makes sure that no one else likes you. But the point I'm bringing up, I believe this will happen. I believe I could be wrong, 100%. But I said the protesters would come back. They did. Now we're seeing the state come and execute a search warrant, taking their guns away. Why would they do that? There's a lot of reasons. But I think the next step is going to be criminal charges. They've already, they've, and, they've, and, and listen, look, it's, it's not like I'm you know, looking into a crystal ball. I got the globe here. I'm talking about a story that came out that said they were already looking at charging this couple. So I believe it is very likely Think about everything we've seen so far. You have no right to defend yourself. This is what they keep saying over and over and over again. One of the first responses is charged with what? And I think they have a lot more friends than a few days ago. They're just not on the left. You see, these people have, look, I don't blame this guy. They don't follow the news like I do. What friends, uh, uh, so, so maybe there are a lot of people on the right who didn't know they overtly supported the Black Lives Matter movement following this incident. Charged with what? That was the other story. Fourth degree assault, I believe, was what was floated. I don't know exactly. I don't know every single charge, but it was something like that. There's also threats of, you know, brandishing a firearm, which may be a felony, things like that. These have been brought up. There is an article talking about how they're seeking to, to you know, try and find charges against the family. Don't be surprised when it happens. And they're going to wait a little bit. Then they're going to go in. So now they've executed the search warrant. They got to do the paperwork. They got to move forward. They're going to say, oh, we got the gun. Oh, now we know, you know, what they were doing with it. And we've decided this was a crime. And then they will be prosecuted. Well, here's what happens in Portland. Federal officers reporting subject was breaking down a door of the federal courthouse with a hammer, creating a hole. Officers came out and one was deliberately struck in the head and shoulder with the hammer. An arrest was made, pepper spray and CS gas deployed. I'm first showing you this to make two points. The first point is that the McCloskeys have every reason to fear that they would be killed by these people. Oh, yes, you might say, but Black Lives Matter is not the same as Antifa. And these protests were peaceful. Shut up. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. How many times have they said the riots were peaceful when MSNBC was standing in front of a burning police department said it's a it's a peaceful protest. Or that really funny headline from the BBC that says, you know, 27 police officers injured in peaceful and mostly peaceful protest. Okay, if a bunch of peaceful people are going around screaming and making threats and then enter private property, it is no longer a peaceful protest, especially when they start making threats or especially when throughout the past month, many people have been killed. At this point, we have a serious problem. You have an overt ideology with a top-down hierarchical structure called Black Lives Matter. They accept funds, millions of dollars, and they have protests. Within these protests, there is violence. So let's play a game. Antifa, they say, doesn't exist. There is no, oh, so that's, that's Portland. Antifa doesn't exist. Antifa rumors and hoaxes have stoked real fear in Philadelphia neighborhoods. You're going to love this one. How about we just stop saying Antifa and start saying Black Lives Matter? They have a hierarchy. They have leaders. They have organizers. They have funding sources, and they're funded and supported by many, many people. Now, I think you can support the general idea 
We saw Joe Jorgensen of the Libertarian Party try this the other day, and boy, did that fail because she went full authoritarian. But I think I have no problem if on the surface your cause is ending police brutality. I agree with that. The problem is the far left has shifted tactics. They've decided to use the mainstream brand to shield themselves, operate within Black Lives Matter, and thus we end up with protesters waving those signs as they destroy property and threaten people. So maybe we no longer need to say Antifa. Maybe the issue is now they've changed their name. They've adopted a hierarchical structure. And when this violence ensues, the people who came to McCloskey's property threatening to kill them, well, that was a Black Lives Matter protest, right? The people in Portland who are trying to break into the federal courthouse, well, some of them were waving signs that Black Lives Matter. So at a certain point, when they're no longer brandishing the Antifa flag, maybe it is correct to say you're right. It's not Antifa. Antifa is just a loose ideology, a catch-all term for various organizations, and it, it identifies their connection, the overlap, what unifies them. Maybe now we just say Black Lives Matter. And I, and, and, and I mean it because McCloskey's, that group, right? Well, l- l- let's be real, though, right? Check out this story from, from the Inquirer. I love this. Antifa rumors and hoaxes have stoked real fear in Philadelphia neighborhoods. And what they show you is people guarding a statue of Christopher Columbus, and they're wearing masks, and many are armed. The reason why I'm showing you this is because this is from the Philadelphia Inquirer. And I also have another story from the Philadelphia Inquirer. South Jersey Theater cancels event about race relations amid threats from anti-fascist protesters. That's right. Self-avowed Antifa threatened to burn down the theater. And that was my event. We moved it to a casino across the river and everything went swimmingly. You see, the event wasn't about race relations. This is the, the, the game the media plays. The, the far left will tell the media, here's what it really is. And they'll say, OK, that's what it is. The event was about basically cultural libertarianism and bringing people together from different political factions to talk about different uh, ideas. And not a single person was a racist, white supremacist or anything like that. But that's the lie they use to shut down liberalism. What I mean by that is freedom of speech, freedom of expression, the right of self-governance. That's what the event was. Our headline speaker was the ever famous Daryl Davis, prominent for de-radicalizing Klan members. That, and he got a standing ovation. Of course he did, because people don't like racism. Daryl Davis is a legend, mind you. But they still wanted to burn the theater down. And the funny thing is, one of the guys who was helping organize this pro- these protests, which resulted in threats to burn down the theater, gave a statement to the Philadelphia Inquirer for their next story, where he's an executive director of a self-avowed Antifa organization, his words, and they still try and claim it doesn't exist. I love it. Here's what they say. Over the last month, South Philadelphia resident Andre DeFrancesco felt that he had plenty of reason to be fearful. It was constant, the stream of memes, photos, and posts pinging his phone via Facebook, Instagram, and text messages. The images, he said, that showed proof of an Antifa plot included a screenshot from Antifa US, an account that was removed from Twitter in early June after it was exposed as a fake account run by white nationalists. There was also hyper-local content, a photo of a pickup truck parked in Philadelphia filled with broken cinder blocks, possibly Antifa munitions. There was a screenshot from a South Philadelphia Facebook page that Antifa supposedly called for 20,000 more of their membership to descend on Philly. There were even what appeared to be joke posts, or were they? Threatening Antifa attacks on Christopher Columbus statue at Marconi Plaza. But the far left did show up and they defended it. So maybe it wasn't fake. They say, although Trump has proposed labeling Antifa a terror group, a nationally organized Antifa network, as imagined in uh, Twitter pranks, does not exist. And most people know this. Yet fears about Antifa spread online through earnest warnings, hoaxes, and even jokes have resonated widely, and they have spilled over from social media into communities around the country already roiled by civil unrest, including South Philadelphia and Fishtown. And on July 4th in Gettysburg, they go on to mention that hundreds of people showed up. They say in each case, residents tense from weeks of civil unrest organized to fight threats that scarcely materialized, sometimes with serious and violent consequences, because apparently they didn't look at their own archives about a theater being, you know, about Antifa threatening to burn down a theater or like, I don't know, the fact that Portland is still undergoing mass violence and everyone can watch the videos. We know Antifa is real, DeFrancesco said, who responded by showing up to help protect the South Philadelphia Columbus statue in June. We don't want to have to keep dealing with these political plots that cause us danger. 
In Fishtown, they brought concerned citizens, some bearing baseball bats, to the Philadelphia Police 26th District in early June. There was word going around on social media that Antifa was coming to Fishtown with the intention of destruction, Captain William Fisher said. On June 22nd, the Facebook page Taking Our South Philadelphia Streets Back posted two photos of shopping carts containing broken cinder blocks. The post, which did not explicitly mention Antifa, was shared nearly 500 times. Looks like they're getting the blocks ready for tomorrow's protest, one one commenter said. And last weekend, after a fake Facebook post promoting an Antifa-led American flag burning in Gettysburg spread widely, hundreds of people reportedly arrived with weapons ready to oppose them. To Kathleen Hall Jameson, director of the Annenberg Public Policy Center of the University of Pennsylvania, all of this shows the need to question what people mean when they say Antifa. Now, that is a good point, yes. And to recognize the meaning is being constructed in real time. All right, let's play a game, Miss Kathleen. The first thing to ask is, what is Antifa? Easy. Antifa is an ideology stemming back from the Communist Party of Germany. They used to get into violent street battles with their political rivals, typically the fascists. But they also wanted to suppress speech because they were authoritarian communists. Today, Antifa, in the modern sense, is an ideology, um, an umbrella ideology that links several independent organizations which fly the banner of Antifa, have the, the flag, the tattoos, represent a very, very similar, similar ideology, typically authoritarian communist, and engage in violence against their political opponents in, in, in I, I would argue, relatively large amounts, uh, large numbers in terms of like the frequency. Now, there's no official executive director of a national organization coordinating any of this because they, do, they, they know the tactics they must employ to protect themselves from federal law enforcement. So they operate as independent cells with membership, with leaders, with funding, organi- organizational infrastructure. And when it comes to regional events, they will call on other cells to join them. And the leaders, there are leaders, there are high profile individuals, keep their distance from specific individuals who will engage in violence to protect what they do. It is the next generation of of internal warfare, civil unrest. These are all outlined in their tactics. They say specifically, there shall be no discernible leader. Otherwise, the feds will arrest them. So the leaders do exist, which is really funny. Let's keep playing this game. How would I find Antifa? Now, that's going to require you knowing certain people floating around in certain areas. But perhaps you can go to the base in New York City, a physical building with big anarchist signs, an avowed Antifa organizing center, and just talk to them. That's how you can find them. Perhaps you can use a Google search and go hang out with Rose City Antifa, which, yes, has their own shirts and have done interviews in group, all wearing their sweaters, their sunglasses on. Can I go to a building? Like I just said, yes, you can. Is there a membership list? Yes, there is, particularly for the individual cells. Do people carry a card? No, but many of them fly a flag and have tattoos. When you use the word Antifa, you're creating the sense that it actually does exist. And it does. Normalizing the language of Antifa without knowing what the reference is. It is becoming a devil term on the right, a term that is used to encapsulate everything you're afraid of. Can you make an enemy out of thin air? Well, it's not thin air, but I will point out that there is some truth in that statement. Many people just refer to any black bloc far leftist as Antifa. It's become a colloquial term for for violent far leftists, but it's because the overwhelming majority of them are authoritarian communists. So I will point out when I was in Portland a couple a year or so ago, year and a half, maybe two years ago, some of the black bloc Antifa types told me that they really did like my work and that legitimately they were there to oppose anyone who was actually a white supremacist. I've actually spoken with some over Antifa who have said they're tired of the violence or that they respect the nuance of discussion. But they like I talked to a guy in California who said that they're going to align and show up with all these Antifa things, even though they know that Antifa crosses the line because they fear that the alternative is worse. I disagree. But at least I've had those conversations. Here's where it gets fun. A contraction of anti-fascist. Antifa is often described as a loosely organized far left movement. Daryl Lamont Jenkins, executive director of a self-identified Antifa organization, One People's Project in New Jersey, said it's really an ideology. All right. (laughs) That's what I wanted to get you. That's why I wanted to bring you. And then I'm done. So you have a guy. Antifa is strong in Philadelphia, he said. You have a guy who is the executive director of a self-identified organization. Let me throw it back to you, Miss Kathleen, director of the Annenberg Public Policy Center. What is Antifa? Well, at the very least, it's this One People's Project. How would you find it? Ask Daryl. 
Can you go to a building? Yes, apparently you can. Is there a membership list? Well, they got an executive director. Does he carry a card? I imagine he might. So what more do you want to say? What, what more needs to be said? They exist. Now, how about this? How about your own headline? Threats from anti-fascist protesters. It wasn't an event on race relations. That is, that is ridiculous. We had, we had conversations about libertarianism versus liberalism and like conversations about feminism. It was a wide ranging conversation among mostly liberal and libertarian individuals, some conservatives. And the headline speaker was a guy famous for de-radicalizing white supremacists. And Antifa said they would burn the theater down. And then the theater broke our contract and told us to shove it. It was an 11th hour play by the far left to shut down liberal conversation. So please spare me the lies and the BS. We know we know what it is. Now, the sad reality, when the state comes to take the guns away from the people defending themselves, when the media lies and says it's not real, the threats against you aren't real, and then Bill de Blasio himself overtly violates the law by saying we are banning public gatherings except for Black Lives Matter. Y'all got a problem on your hands. You see this? The ideology, this religion is spreading. It is dominant. They have allies in media who would lie and pretend they don't exist. They're allowed by the government to, to special access. They can paint their slogans in the street. They can march in the street and ain't nobody gonna, gonna stop them. And when they show up to your house threatening you, if you try to defend yourself, even by just holding the weapon, the police will come. What should a person do at this point? I, I don't know. Speak up is the best you can do for now. Section 230 reform will always be my big bet, but I'm not positive that it's going to change anything. I think it's the best bet, but I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.